Uh, I am Renata. I am a UX researcher. I work for URA Design uh, to improve usability of open source software. I am also a part of uh, open source design and I started my UX research, doing UX research um, in 2016 uh, through Outreach, where I did usability testing for GNOME. I am also a part of um, Fedora's diversity and inclusion team. Uh, so, designs are assumptions until validated with end users. What I mean by this is basically um, when developers and designers are um, building a user interface, um, so what they have in mind, uh, they, they build it on based on how they think the, it's the best way for the users, but in the end, um, most likely that's and ends up being uh, proved wrong by the users. And so it becomes very hard for them to use, to actually use the software. So um, in that case, what people do is they usually blame the users for not knowing how to use the software. So they, they label them as beginners, non-technical people, and stuff like that, which is and this keeps just going on and spiraling, so it becomes like a rat race, um, where, um, and this happens also in every kind of software, but especially mostly on open source software usability. So um, there's a way how to stop the rat race, and that is doing user research. Uh, what user research basically is, is um, connecting uh, the end users with designers and developers. Um, so you just find a way to translate the user's needs and to show them to developers and designers so they uh, take them to considerations while building the interface. So there are a lot of uh, ways that you can do user research. There's A-B testing, interviews, surveys, card source, tree testing, and the list goes on, but uh, today we'll focus on usability testing because that's the main um, form, the main method for conducting user research and it's the most effective one. So, um, but before we get into me explaining how to conduct a usability test, I just want to show you some use cases. So, uh, on software that I've been working the past year. Uh, one of them um, is HTTPS Everywhere. So on this side you can see this is the basic, uh, the first design that they did and they had it for years. It's basically, uh, it turned out to be not very user friendly. It's a bunch of checkboxes and uh, just links. And we did few iterations of user research and usability testings and we did some surveys and we did, uh, after four iterations basically, we concluded this, um, this design, which is the final design and will be implemented soon by HTTPS Everywhere. Uh, another example is Thunderbird Preferences Redesign. So this was the original uh, state of the design. Uh, when we did uh, user research and through the usability testing sessions, we saw that the users could uh, not be able to use the horizontal bar very, very well and the sidebar was not very user friendly because it has so much components going on and they did not uh, know how to distinct them. For example, they always messed up the security and privacy bar. They did not know uh, which uh, one uh, has uh, which options. This is after the redesign. This is a mock-up that we did. So we narrowed down the options in the sidebar. Uh, privacy and security are not together. And um, we got rid of the horizontal bar. And you can see the interface is much cleaner and it turned out to be much easier to use. This will always uh, also be implemented. Uh, the third use case, I chose Briar. 
Um, Briar is a secure messaging app. Um, this is not actually a redesign. Uh, they just uh, came up with a new feature, which is adding contacts remotely. So we had to come up with a whole idea for the design. So we did user research first, and we came up with the first prototype, which is that one. Um, after that, we tested it, and that did not uh, go well on user testings, because users do not uh, know how to navigate through the screen very well. And then we decided to split the screen. This is the second prototype, by the way. Um, this was better, uh, but we are now coming up with a third version, which should be the, the one that gets implemented. So, um, hopefully you're convinced that doing a usability test and research, it's good, and you want to know how to test it. So, how can you do it? Uh, it's fairly easy, easy to do it, so most people um, have a misconception of thinking that to do a usability test in a session you need uh, big labs and um, a lot of resources actually, a lot of testers and um, experienced people to test them, but that's not the case. I think everyone uh, can do that. You basically need uh, just a few things. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can conduct a usability test on only three steps. So, um, the first step is just choosing personas. What I mean by that is um, you should know the target users for uh, the software that you want to test. Um, for this example, I wanted to take software known software because it's fairly easier to explain but you can apply the same things to whichever uh, software that you choose so um, the first step that you should think of is um, who uses known software if we were to test right now again we would think um, okay we should test with designers so we would include in our tests uh, more beginner designers more experienced ones but in this case GNOME software should be used by everyone, so we should make sure to include in our testing a diverse range of participants. So after we, we have come up with the targeted users, and um, now we can move on to scenario tests. What scenario tests are? They are basically tasks that you give to each participant that uh, they can accomplish. Uh, for example, um, so for GNOME software, uh, the first ta task might be you choose an application and you tell the uh, tester to install that application and you, you watch how they do it and you see, uh, you get to observe if, if it's easy for them to uh, find the software that you're looking for and to install it. A second task might be to remove uh, uninstalled software and now again you can just watch them how they navigate through the screen and if they can find out how to remove the application, how do they find that, that option? Do they search it in the search bar of the application and then remove it? Do they go to the installed applications? Or because there are a lot of ways that the user can get to the finish point, but you should uh, just observe each uh, user how they do it. Uh, another task might be just to update preferences. So here you can observe if the user knows and understands uh, the text here, um, if they know what uh, this means, and um, how to use the, the, the screen. Another task might be just uh, looking for updates, but you should be careful while doing the task, so you, you should not give hints to the users. Um, so when you uh, make the task, you should, on this case, for example, um, do not use the words like update, find uh, an application, find updates. You can just say like, can you find out the version of this application and then they should 
find out by themselves. Because if you give hints, then uh, there's no point in testing usability of that. Um, you can do how many tasks that you, you find reasonable. Uh, usually, just five testers and five tasks, five to ten tasks, it's more than enough to uncover most usability issues. But if you want to get more specific and to get more details, then you can do more than that. This is another task uh, that you could give, for example, if you want to find out if they you know the version of GNOME software or how to contribute. So after we are done with uh, all the tasks and we chose our participants, now we can move on to the actual testing part. Um, the tools that we need for testing uh, are fairly simple. Uh, in our case with GNOME software, all, we need, all you need to test is a quiet room, a good internet connection, um, a laptop with a software installed, and that's it. Uh, so you s basically you sit down on a chair with, uh, on the side of the participant. Um, it's important to, be, to not be remote because that's a totally different uh, way to do usability testing. This is more effective. Uh, and you get to observe the user while it's uh, accomplishing the tasks. Um, another thing you might might need is a uh, notebook so you can take notes during the test. So because it's important that when the test so starts, you shouldn't um, stop the test. So you just uh, set on a timer and measure each tester how uh, how much time each task is taking, and you do not uh, interrupt them. Uh, all the questions that you might have, you just write them down and wait until the testing session is done, and then you can continue and ask them. So after you've conducted uh, all the tests, um, this is uh, the most crucial part of the testing. So it's it's finally getting the results. So um, the way this is the connection that I've talked earlier, uh, with the results you're making the connection between end users uh, and um, developers and designers. So you want to find a way that all the usability uh, issues that you found out in the testing that you made, uh, you translate them to uh, other people and make them understandable uh, so that others can uh, work on improving them. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, you can show your results. So the first one is a formal paper. This is basically you getting on details of everything that you got from the usability testing. So uh, screenshots and so explaining everything and also giving recommendations um, on how to improve those. If you do not feel comfortable or, or don't know how to give um, recommendations on, on improvements, you can easily just um, just let them know about the results and the issues and then maybe someone else might uh, have an idea on how to improve. Um, another format that you can do is a semi-formal paper or shorter paper. You can do a live presentation. You can also just file an issue on bug trackers and um, explain each usability issue and then other people can comment and help. Um, so, a great tool to help uh, with showing the result is actually visualization. So you can use screenshots and just mark the parts that are uh, had issues, so were not very easy for uh, users. And after you mark them, then explain in a text format underneath them what the problem was. Uh, you can also use charts or tables or whatever. Um, whatever visualization tools that you think would fit uh, your own results. Heat maps are a great way to show uh, results also. So basically, a heat map is a table of each task and how each tester performed on each task. So on one side of the table, you have listed all the tasks that you gave to the user, and the other side, is filled with boxes. So every box, every um, every color, 
has its own meaning. So for example, the green boxes represent the tasks that were very easy uh, to accomplish. Then the yellow tasks are basically where the users had more troubles, more issues. Uh, the red ones are when they uh, pass the time limit, so they took more time than it should to accomplish a task. And the black ones are basically uh, the tasks where the user just gave up and could not uh, get how to do that. And this is a great way uh, to get the results for people who are not interested in reading the text format of everything, what everything went wrong. They can just look at the heat map and um, get an overall feeling of what went wrong and what went right. Uh, so hopefully by now uh, you are able to and you know how you can contribute by doing user research and usability testing. Uh, we've talked about how to do user, uh, user research, what is it, why it's important, and uh, most importantly how to present the results. Um, so hopefully you'll contribute to Fedora's user experience. And thank you so much. If you have any questions, let me know. experience testing uh, program in Fedora? Like, uh, I think so. Yeah. So Fedora, I, I'm not very involved, but I think Fedora has uh, come in, uh, part of the community does um, design. And the user experience and usability testing uh, and also accessibility go under the design part. So it's not the same, I'd say, but it's under the design. So I'm aware of the technical bugs, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like process and so mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. but uh, it seems to me that uh, like in Fedora, anything like improving user experience is not visible. So do you have any like, uh, particular overview or, or idea of what is the state of the affairs in Fedora? Uh, I'm not sure. I, again, I'm not really involved in the uh, design okay. community in Fedora. I'm more in open source design, but not in I mean diversity and inclusion team, uh, but maybe some someone here is more experienced in the design community here, and they can answer. No? I do think they have a special pleasure instance, like you design ones, and they are tracking everything over there. Yeah. There are some polls or some application even did the testing, for example, when the new Anaconda came, and then mm -hmm. they made some new user testing. I think that everything, most everything is done or written by or in the Yeah, uh, that's also true. So. <laughs> but yes, from time to time, some projects do this. Yeah. Like Anaconda. I'm not sure if it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so the That's a good idea to just have an uh, active uh, community of people who do just user testings. And because, like I explained, it's not very hard to do. It's fairly easy, uh, minimal amount of people, so five people, and you don't, have, you don't need much uh, things going on. So they, it, it would be a good idea to have a community like that, maybe on the design or something, and just help with visibility blocks.
something you can just be a developer of whatever you do and still do the testing. Yeah. So you don't need any expertise to do this. But with this approach is the problem that you have to work with the person on the side behind the system. So yeah. it's important. Yeah. So what about using the ambassador for that? Like people who are doing boots and explaining again and again that you know it's great. Just ask the people to say if you know it's great and if you want to help. There is a set of tasks and then you get people to see that it's something new for 20 minutes but you can say again if you know it's great. But um, if you get people who are not well at developer who are not university students looking for free food, because that's <laughs> open, open house, um, and you can get people from all over the world. Because I like Bonova. Yeah, just check that people's head. That's true. Especially since some functions like federal, federal uh, release parties could be used to process stuff. Maybe yeah. if there would be someone who would bear a computer and videotape maybe the session. Yeah, there are ways, but this I'm not sure. This could also be like a visibility testing. So if there's a meetup or something, mm -hmm. You can just organize it, take your laptop with you, and whoever wants to contribute, uh, they can do it. So I did that before in Open Labs, which is open source community in Albania. I just went with my laptop, for, uh, and I tested some applications with them, and they were very welcoming, and they wanted to help and participate on task what, what they did. So we can also do that. So when you choose the heat does it happen does it happen where everything is green and People manage to do it or never have any problems. You need the heat maps? Yeah, because there is always a problem with design, but did you already see somewhere where nobody had any issue? Uh -huh. Did it already open or you always find issue? So, um, you mean the colors on the... Yeah. yeah. So the, the green boxes are when you're testing, basically, uh, you are sitting next to the user. And you yeah, no, 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 I understand, but... Uh, you seem to show that there is always issue. Did it already yeah, happen that because nobody because has issue? Yeah, I, uh, I don't, uh, from how much I've tested, I've never had an application that didn't have any usability issue. So okay. there's always green and red, maybe black boxes, no, because they are uh, fairly easy to use, but green, red, and yellow were always on the list. So I don't think there's such a complication that's perfect and very easy to use for people. But we we are striving to make it uh, more green and yellow friendly and mm -hmm. remove the red and black boxes, you say. Do you know, are there any uh, open source uh, applications which uh, do use uh, automated units experience uh, metering, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Measuring whether people are uh, take it, uh, find it easy to, to accomplish something and so on. Um, no, the, I mean there are a lot. Of, I don't know if, if there is an open source tool for that. There are a lot of uh, tools to do that. But uh, my recommendation is always to do it in person and not use other tools, other people tools, because uh, in person you get other people's emotions. So you can just know when they are feeling like frustrated with the task or if they are getting nervous or angry or and with automation you, you cannot feel how the users are reacting to a certain task. So the best way that you can get out the most out of the usability test is just to be in person. Even remote usability testing is not as effective as in person usability testing. But there are a lot of things to do. But are there any open source applications which uh, which do this? Because yeah. I agree it's definitely best to do it in person, but uh, it seems we have no such, uh, reg we definitely yeah. don't regularly use such opportunity. So uh, for, for auto if, if there is any application which is doing it automatically, maybe we can look at how they I'm do that. I'm Design patterns, for example, GNOME has a human uh, interaction design patterns. And they are on their website, and you can just, when you're building the application, you, you can just look at uh, the components and why they are used and for which use case they should be used. So you can use that as a guideline to redesign an application. Um, but I'm not feeling 
And this thinking about something like a building in application and functionality, mm -hmm. which will allow you to say, I like this, I don't like this, something by opt-in for the automated mm -hmm. material. So I'm not aware of any open source application doing this? No, no. So. They are not. But the point of the testing is to not let the user tell you what, is, what they like or they don't like. It. You should see it sometimes. Because most of the times, that's how you get the, the real the um, real their experience and here is what to describe there are tools to help with usability I think for example with eye tracking I know some usability uh, some usability um, tools uh, that are open source that do eye tracking I can't remember the name right now but if you're interested I can send you the link they make the goggles and uh, the software that goes with them to just to do eye tracking. Mm -hmm. That's all open source. Um, but for, uh, they are also another tool like survey tools that you can use, and they are open source also. But not particularly the one we talked about. Okay. Any other comment question? Okay, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.